Is there Pavel Alexander present? Dmitry Fanov. It's me. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. The, I don't know why Pavel was uh, indicated as a speaker, but I will. Uh, so uh, you can see my my presentation, yeah? Yes, I, I see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I will stop video to uh, not affect traffic. Okay, uh, so um, I'm Dmitry Ivanov. Uh, we uh, I will talk about um, the sized speech recognition system. So, uh, what's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, first of all, I would like to say that the problem is very relevant. Synthesized speech is firmly established in our lives. Uh, amazing example is the presidential election in South Korea this year. The team, the team has created a digital avatar of Yoon Suk Yu, uh, uh, and um, uh, it uh, took part in a uh, presidential race as a uh, candidate. Yes. And uh, so, speech synthesis is an artificial simulation of human speech using a computer. It's a counterpart of the voice recognition, and it's mainly used to convert textual information into audio information so that a person can naturally interact with digital devices. Uh, but um, a separate direction is the use of speech thin synthesis to create a clone of a person's voice. Deep fake voice technology, also called voice cloning or synthetic voice has advanced to the point where it can faithfully reproduce the human voice with great accuracy in tone and likeness. So attackers can use it to pull voice authentication systems or create fake audio re recordings to defame public figures or combine this voice clone with social engineering techniques to convince people to send money and so on. And uh, uh, voice fake algorithms are constantly being improved. So there is no universal method for determining a synthesized voice. The accuracy of current existing recognition system is also not optimal and significantly depends on the training data set. Given the above facts, the recogni recognition of synthesized speech still remains an urgent problem of information security. security. So how to recognize synthesized speech? There are two, there are two stages in choice of research methods of voice recognition. The first stage is the analysis of the audio recordings uh, for its further verification. Usually it is presented in the form of capstral coefficients, which carry a lot of information about the speaker, describes the shape of the vocal tract. There are many different methods for calculating various coefficients. As a result of the analysis of related works, we decided to choose not one coefficient, but uh, to use two coefficients to improve accuracy. LFCC, linear frequency capstral coefficients, and uh, CQCC, constant Q capstral coefficients. 
The second stage is the choice of neural network architecture. The performed analysis showed in, uh, that the bidirectional network of long-term, short-term memory is the most acceptable. It's an extension. It's an extension of the traditional LSTM neural network, and uh, there were not so many attempts to to train the model using uh, this neural net. Also, this model was not trained using the proposed mixture of coefficients LFCC and CQCC. The flowchart of program algorithm is shown here. The system receives an input signal in the form of a raw WAF uh, audio file. The file is cleared of empty fragments, after which the spectral features of LFCC and CQCC are extracted in parallel. Then it is necessary to classify the objects and conclude whether the voices synthesized or not. To do this, uh, we uh, first use uh, GMM-based clustering, and then classify groups of clusters using the bidirectional LSTM network. This approach was chosen because, unlike the classification of individual objects, the classification of cluster groups uh, determines abstract and more valuable hidden knowledge, ignoring noise. Bidirectional LSTM is used for classification. This architecture allows you to analyze not only the previous frames of the input sequence, but also subsequent ones, and determine whether the sound is real or already having a complete picture. Uh, that the architecture of the network in, in common uh, is shown here. But to perform uh, such system, it's necessary to obtain a synthesized human voice, which will be used for subsequent training of the neural network. Based on this, there is a need for a data set that uses various synth synthesis algorithms. Therefore, in this work, the existing open voice cloning libraries were analyzed and uh, um, the five most effective uh, ones were selected that have an open source code. Uh, so in that table, the, the table shows the selected uh, libraries which we have used. Uh, to test the performance of the synthesized voice recognition, we assembled a data set in English. Now it's, it's in English only. Uh, and uh, the existing Mozilla Common Voice uh, data set was taken as a basis. It contains more than 2,000 hours of verified voice. Uh, it's in MP3 format, but we converted them. And uh, basic requirements for such data set um, is present uh, here, you can see. And uh, uh, the last link uh, is a link to a data set which uh, we uh, constructed uh, for this neural network. So, uh, uh, the main results of the work uh, is uh, the mixture of coefficients LFCC and uh, CQCC. Uh, for user model, we use GMM uh, model. Uh, that architecture is bidirectional LSTM neural network. So we uh, used uh, all of uh, these cloning libraries and uh, you can test our data set if, if you research in this field, uh, yeah. Oh. 
so thank you for for your attention and uh, please listen carefully to the voice of the person you are talking to on the phone and if you have any questions uh, please ask me okay thank you uh, is there any question I will stop share. Is no uh, a question for the audience? Okay, I have a question. Uh, do you compare your system with the related work in the literature? Uh, yes, yes, we uh, we. Um, uh, tested uh, analysis, uh, the problem is uh, that uh, data sets, uh, which are used for, for any other systems, are not opened. So you cannot, um, you cannot uh, repeat uh, the research uh, such as it is described in some papers. So we uh, created, uh, especially for this work, our own uh, data set uh, we are going to uh, to uh, to add uh, russian language because uh, we we think uh, that um, uh, the language uh, the, the result is is very is is, is very dependent on of the language on which neural network um, uh, is training uh, so yes yes the answer is yes. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.